We've been discussing music in Alfred Hitchcock's films on our Facebook page and how his selection of incidental music was anything but incidental. Catchy. What? A tune you're whistling. Ta 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 ta. From his very first sound film, Blackmail, Hitchcock employed music in ways that were complementary or contrapuntal to a given scene, as have many filmmakers since. But no director has made use of music as a plot device nearly as often or nearly as well as Alfred Hitchcock. I can't get that tune out of my head. Maybe if somebody tells me what it is, I'll forget it. It's key to the 39 steps and the lady vanishes, plays a role in Shadow of a Doubt and Rear Window, but music is truly showcased in both versions of The Man Who Knew Too Much. In the 1934 British version, Hitchcock created one of his greatest sequences for generating suspense by taking an idea from an H.M. Bateman cartoon published in a 1921 issue of Punch magazine called The One Note Man. Hitchcock and his writers concocted the idea of a single musical note, a cymbal crash, concealing a political assassination during a concert at the Royal Albert Hall. Years later, Hitchcock would try to revive that idea, but this time having the tune save someone's life. Now, he first attempted this in Rear Window. Mr. Jeffries, the music stopped her. Here, the songwriter's sentimental tune helps to save Miss Lonely Heart's life when she hears it and opts not to take a handful of sleeping pills. Oh, it's going to be a hit. This is the first release. I'd love to hear it. I can't tell you what this music has meant to me. But before John Michael Hayes completed his screenplay, in the treatment for Rear Window, it is Lisa Fremont, Grace Kelly's character, who is saved by the song. Now Hitchcock decided to shift the focus away from the major characters for this device in this instance. That song again. However, he would pick up on the idea again two years later when he decided to revisit The Man Who Knew Too Much, in which each of the musical selections performs double duty as plot device and commentary. Now the concert work, the storm cloud cantata, conceals the assassination attempt, but its lyrics are reflective of the storm that the McKenna family must weather if they're going to be reunited. The church hymn allows the McKennas to awkwardly communicate with one another during a service in the Ambrose Chapel. This is just another wild goose chase. Let's but its lyrics provide a foreshadowing of Mrs. Drayton's rebellion against her husband. You've got to let the boy go! Precisely what I'm thinking, my dear. And the popular song, Whatever Will Be, better known as... Hey, sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. Helps the McKennas to recover their son Hank, while its lyrics speak to the film's recurring themes of chance and accidental occurrences. Uh, your little boy accidentally pulled off his wife's veil, you oh. know. Why was he so angry? It was just an accident. But uh, the Muslim religion allows for few accidents. Yeah, I oh. suppose so. Now, to me, Hitchcock pulled off the perfect trifecta with his musical selections in the 1956 Hollywood version of The Man Who Knew Too Much. If you haven't seen it in a while or never before, you should check it out. Thanks for watching.